Hi friends, let's talk about the biggest problem with using a new MacBook Pro, the setup. When you first unbox it, I guarantee you nothing is geared towards productivity. But here's the thing, I'm not going to give you a list of 59 Mac apps to download. That is not what you need, because the last thing you need is more random apps crowding your workflow, making everything more complicated and ruin your beautiful and overpriced machine. So after thousands of hours of personal and professional experience working with MacBook, here is my 25 steps to transform your MacBook into the ultimate productivity machine. I've broken this step down into three checkpoints. Fix, replace, and remember, with each becoming progressively more important. Follow all these steps, and I guarantee everything you do on your MacBook will be much more efficient. So our first checkpoint, which I call fix, is meant to fix all the nonsensical setting in macOS Sequoia. So starting with a dock. If you don't know, you can actually click this line and drag up and down to resize the bar. But you probably don't know that you can also drag it to the right side of the screen. I find that my hands move more naturally towards the right, and it gives me more screen real estate to really look at the whole window, right? When I'm working on a specific program like Final Cut. So having it on the right side actually help a lot. You also naturally look under the screen. So if you want to focus on your work, it's actually a very good habit to hide the bar altogether or at least move it out of the way. And next, we are going to fix the genie effect, which is this fancy animation where your window goes into the app icon like a genie. It takes very long, it looks cute, but it's also very distracting. Uh, you can do that by going to setting in desktop and dock under minimize window using and change it into scale effect. This way, your window will actually minimize the motion, which is a lot cleaner in my opinion. And you also want to have the minimize into icon option checked. Uh, after these two steps, you will get a quick and smooth effect when you minimize all your windows. While we are still on the dock setting, we're gonna uncheck show suggested and recent app in the dock. If you have this on, there will be a lot more random apps under here in this region. Highly unnecessary, so turn it off. And if you screw all the way to the bottom, you're gonna see hot corners. So click this button, the hot corner menu setup uh, will come up. So basically when you touch one of the four corners, something will happen, right? And this can be a very useful feature for some people. But with the way how it's set up right now, you will certainly hate it after accidentally triggering it for a thousand times. So if you like hot corners, you can leave them on, but I suggest to put a modifier to the way you trigger it. So for example, at this setup window, after you click the drop down menu, you can press command and then set your hot corner accordingly. This way it will only trigger whenever you touch the corner well the command aka modifier is pressed so it won't trigger unintentionally. Now that we are done with dock let's move on to the trackpad. Again start with setting we are now going into pointer control and then click trackpad option then enable three finger drag. This will allow you to drag a window around using three fingers rather than having to click and drag which is so so inconvenient. Also very good for your carpal tunnel. Next, let's fix the scroll bar. Also, start from setting, go to appearances, under show scroll bars, select always, under click in the scroll bar too, select jump to the spot that's clicked. This way, when you read a very long document or article online, you can quickly jump to the right section without having to wait for the scroll bar to appear. And after that's done, we're going to fix our finger. I mean finder. It's been a long day. First, when the finder is open, you want to click view, show status bar. You want to do that again and show pass bar. That's going to give you the basic information about your file and folders. Second, while you're still in Finder, you want to click Finder and go to Settings. And under General, you want to change the option New Finder Window Shows into Documents rather than Recent. And if you go to the right, click Tags, you want to uncheck everything. Most people don't use tag at all, but if version control is really that much important to you, you're likely to use some other tools anyways. Next, under sidebar, pick whatever folder you use most frequently, or a system folder that is very hard to find. And put a pin to that, we're coming back to that. This is because a lot of the folder in macOS is so hidden away that finding the right path actually take a very long time. But a lot of these folders are actually quite important. For example, motion template folder contains all the plugins for my special effect. Library folder contains all the fonts you will definitely use for your different applications. So you want to have them by your side. The library folder is a good example of that. Uh, to find that one, click go and hold option. You will see the library folder pop up. This is another setup. In macOS, if you hold options, a lot of the menu actually change accordingly. So if you couldn't find whatever settings in the drop down menu, try hold down option button and see if whatever you're looking for is there. So after you click the library folder open, you want to drag this path onto the sidebar. 
While we are here, I also recommend you to get rid of the airdrop because there's a better place for it. You also want to delete this recent folder because we're going to make a new one later. But we're not done with Spider yet. You will see on this section, you can add a fill button on top of the folder. Here you want to right click and click customize toolbar. You can just drag and drop any control element onto your finder window. And for me, I have view, sort, new folder, airdrop, and share. I use this all the time, but feel free to make your own version of it. This is where you absolutely want to have the airdrop button because once you press it here a tiny window pop up for you to use it whereas if you have it on the sidebar it will always open the full window and it takes up so much precious screen space and next one we actually want to change the share button under this share button there is an option to edit extension which basically means the way share button pop up when you click it it will only have a few options for you to choose from for example for me NLT feature is from a third-party app called Cleanshot, which we'll talk about later so basically here you want to choose only the relevant share option for you. Of course, having a clean folder is one thing. Searching for the right item within that folder is another issue we're going to have to fix. While we are at the finder menu, you want to go into setting and click at once under when perform in search. Change this option to search the current folder. This is really a no-brainer. While you're in a certain folder, typically if you want to search, you want to see what's inside the folder, right? But if you don't set it up this way, your Mac is actually going to give you a bunch of irrelevant stuff all over your computer. 9 times out of 10, you don't want that. And the second thing we're going to fix about search is you want to create a smart search folder. For example, your recent folder only shows files you recently opened, but that's not what you want, right? Most of the time, you just need to find the relevant folder that contains the file you want. So you create a folder somewhere, have all the important files, but you forgot where you made that folder, right? Happens all the time. To do that, you can create your own recent folder. So you can go to file, create a new smart folder, and then click this plus sign on the right corner to add a bunch of search criteria. For example, I will add criteria of recently opened in the last seven days. Click done. So you can save it to the sidebar so you always have a customized recent folder at your disposal. And the last thing we're going to fix, turn off Apple Intelligence and Siri. Now, before you freak out, let me just say, I know Apple made a lot of promises on the bright future of Apple Intelligence and future of Siri. But in reality, Apple is really starting to lag behind in the AI race, comparing with every other major tech companies. And they recently just did a huge organization change trying to do some catch up. So before someone makes Siri great again, I think we're gonna stick with ChatGPT as our virtual assistant, but more on that later. So up to this point, your Mac should have all the basics set up as a workstation. However, it's nowhere near of being productive. To fix that, we're going to move on to our second checkpoint, which is to replace some of the functions that macOS just doesn't do very well. We are going to do that with just five third-party apps. First of all, we are going to talk about window management. I know since macOS Sequoia, you can snap window to the edges uh, in some basic arrangement, but you're going to have to drag it around using a mouse. And when you are typing away on your computer, taking your hand away from your keyboard will just slow things down. The best solution is to download an app called Wins. This app actually lets you uh, assign shortcuts to a specific window arrangement. For example, after a quick setup, I can press Command 1 to go full screen. Cycle through Command 2 will resize it to the left. I can have a very slim bar, a bigger bar, a really fat bar. And if I press Command 3, I can resize it to the right. And if you ask what if I want to split it into three screens, maybe you want to get a secondary monitor. Or later in the video, I'm going to teach you how you can use an iPad for that as well. This app also let us to quickly close things down. If you're like any normal people uh, after a busy day or work, you're going to have a million window open everywhere, right? It's going to be very, very messy. But thanks to Wins, you can close up using mission control view. Use your mouse to hover over it, command W or command Q. I can close it right there. A screenshot or a screen recording with your computer is something you can do quite often. But the default app is not really optimized for every use case. So that's why I always think the next app we're talking about is really indispensable. Cleanshot X. This is actually replaced a normal screenshot app on a Mac with a lot more added benefits. For one, it allows optical character recognition, OCR. When you take a screenshot of picture of a bunch of text, it allows you to paste those tags instead of a picture. It even has the rounded corner thing that enabled by default, which might just give your screenshot a tiny bit more taste. Now we cover a lot of basic macOS setting in our first checkpoint. If you haven't realized, there are tons of ways to adjust your Mac setting, but the control is just all over the place. If you don't want to waste time going through them one by one, you want to replace your control center with this app called Only Switch, which lets us create our own super control center. It gives us one-click access to toggle stuff like dark mode, true tone, or the keyboard backlight. But there's more. Only Switch brings some unique features to the table, like ejecting all disks at once, hiding files on the desktop, or keeping your Mac awake. We can customize all those things in the app's settings. 
Plus, if you run lots of shortcut scripts, it also lets you seamlessly integrate them too. So the combination is basically endless. And the best part is this is completely free to download and open source. It's basically the control center that Apple should have designed. They have a lot of options so you can customize however you want. So really spend some time there and figure out what sort of switch you want to have on top of this bar on your MacBook. Next tip, you need to have a text expander. Many people don't know about this, but Apple actually have a default text expander you can set up, but the function is very limited. That's why we're going to replace it with Typeinator. It's best in its class text expander, which doesn't cost you a subscription fee. By the way, none of the app we're talking about is sponsored or affiliated, so feel free to try them out on your own. How text expander works is really, really simple. You type some uh, operation that you set up and expand to something that you often type repetitively, like your address, your phone number. For one, you will ever make a mistake, and two, it just saves you a lot of time doing repetitive stuff. This one is a no-brainer. You want to have ChatGPT. Remember how I asked you to disable Siri? Well, if you haven't, 90% of your search is going to get rerouted to ChatGPT anyways. Just cut out the middleman. So here's what I did. Anytime you press option plus space on your MacBook, a tiny window will pop up. This is a default setting of it. But if you hit command shift in, it's going to become a temporary chat. That means the chat history is not going to get saved in the ChatGPT app. And also, that means it's not going to be used by OpenAI to train their future model. Also, if you open up the voice chat on the ChatGPT function, I really like the fact that uh, I can talk to it while doing something else, which basically makes it the perfect virtual assistant. Finally, remember is our final checkpoint of bringing the most productivity to your MacBook. I'm going to show you my own workflow and how I use shortcut other hardware for Apple ecosystem to stay productive all day long. But before we continue, let me quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, Mongli.com. We all know staying productive can be a challenge, but that's not the most challenging part. The most challenging part is turning big ideas into actions. And if you have a business to run, you know you cannot do that if your projects are scattered across a bunch of platforms. That's where Monday.coms comes in, a powerful work management platform that helps streamline your workflow and boost team efficiency. I recently started my own company while working full-time as a management consultant. Everything was going pretty well until I realized I was drowning in spreadsheet, emails, and random notifications. With 20 people spreading across three geographic locations to manage, my team quickly began working in silos, making everything much harder to execute. And then I learned about Monday.com. I instantly like its time-saving features such as workflow automation, which is designed to streamline the way the team collaborates. For example, whenever I'm done shooting one of my videos, I can simply mark it down on Monday's platform, and my team will automatically be notified to start working on post-production affiliates, sponsorship, and whatever come after. Whereas before, I'm going to have to coordinate everything manually. Setting up this automation is incredibly simple. Just choose your trigger, set the conditions, and define the actions. You can create multiple combinations to fit your exact workflow needs. Beyond automation, Monday.com offers comprehensive project management features. Whether you're leading a small team or managing hundreds of people, this platform can transform how you work. Click the link in the description to elevate your team's productivity with Monday.com today. And let's get back to the video. Now let me walk you through a couple of scenarios how I use my MacBook Pro every single day. Tip number 19, as a Mac user, it's a good habit to keep some hardware storage with you at all time. I have this 2TB M3 Max here, but even 2TB, I constantly run into storage problem. That's why I bought a couple of these to couple with this $4,000 machine. This is a 4TB M.2 SSD box from Ugreen. Inside it, there's a Samsung 990 Pro M.2 drive. On paper, it was advertised to have transfer speed up to 7.4 gigabytes per second, but it will be somewhat limited to the cable and the housing. In my real world test, the speed consistently stabilized around 3.2 gigabytes per second. Plus, this is very small, you can easily fit it in your tech pouch. Once I'm at office and start working on whatever project I'm on, the single most command I give to my MacBook is literally closing windows, closing program, and switching between them. So in tip 20, you will need to remember a set of keyboard shortcuts so your hands do not have to leave the keyboard. And you can do that as long as you remember the following shortcut. So command W for closing a window, and command Q for close a program, command tilde to cycle between windows, command tab to cycle between programs. And usually in any sort of browser, you can press command T to open up a new tab, command N to open up a new window. And if you press command shift N in Chrome, you will open a new incognito window. Now typically at work or my home office, I have additional monitors. But if I go on a business trip or sitting in a coffee shop, I don't have that luxury of additional screen real estate. Apparently not everyone knows this, but you can actually use your iPad as a second monitor. You don't even need to have a cable to connect them. All you need to do is to go to control center, select screen mirror and click on your iPad nearby. This is very handy if you want to work off two documents or do some multitask when you're out on the road. 
Now, I know earlier I said not to use a mouse when you work on general office work, but there are other professional applications other than financial modeling that requires mouse input, such as engineering drawing, video editing, or making PowerPoint slides few people see. If that's you, then you likely have one of these productivity mouse. So tip number 22, remember to map your shortcuts to these additional buttons on your mouse. When I'm in PowerPoint, my thumb is under this big button, which is mapped to making a duplicated slides. And when I'm in Final Cut, this secondary scroll let me move my video timeline horizontally. And when I'm in Finder or Browser window, these two little buttons let me move to previous or next tab for quicker window navigation. This is probably my sixth mouse. They do break pretty quickly though, so every couple mouse, I got a new one. This one is already pretty beat up. So the final scenario of my typical day, during my day, I typically uh, type a lot and copy paste a lot. But on a Mac, there's a few tricks you need to remember to make sure you type efficiently. If you press Command Shift V, you will always paste result format. And also, if you press Command and Backspace, you can delete a block of text or sometimes a line of text altogether. In case you don't know, if you hold down the function key, that's a little globe icon here, you will actually delete the character coming after your cursor. So a function much more like the delete button on a PC. And last but not least, if you hold down Command Control Space, you will bring out the emoji keyboard. Now tip 24 and 25 are my personal favorites, which is to use a good headphone and play white noise when you try to focus. And there's an app called Portal can help you with just that. Research shows that background sounds significantly impact your ability to focus. Natural white noise like birdsong or waterfalls helps enhance concentration. So this Portal app, which on the surface is just a fancy wallpaper app that costs $70 a year, that's quite expensive. Um, but compared to the productivity boost it brings me, that's actually a good deal. The more important features is the carefully designed sound it brings to your MacBook. I tried finding alternatives on Apple Music, Spotify, and YouTube. However, none of the free versions come even close. That's when I realized it's surprisingly difficult to engineer sounds that don't feel intrusive and actually help put your mind at ease. For me at least, it's definitely worth the price. That concludes the 25 tips for turning your MacBook into the ultimate productivity machine. I hope these tips help you to set up the new machine or upgrade your current workflow. If you're interested in how I transform other Apple products into productivity-focused devices, check out this video next. I'll see you there.